Chapter 8, Lesson 3, Functions and Equations. A linear function is a function whose graph is a straight line. You can use an equation to represent a function. The input, or the independent variable, represents the x value, and the output, which is the dependent variable, represents the y value. Write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. So we want to write an equation that's going to help us find our output with any given input value. So we want to look for a pattern between our inputs and outputs. So to get from our first input, 1, to get to our output, we can do times 9. And if this rule works for every input and output on this table, then we can use that to write our equation. So 2 times 9 does give us 18, 3 times 9 gives us 27, 4 times 9 gives us 36, and 5 times 9 gives us 45. So we can always find our output value, which would always represent y. Our output is always going to be equal to 9 times any input value, which we can represent as x. So the equation for this function is y equals 9x. Example 2. Write an equation to represent the function shown in the table. So again, we want to write an equation that will give us any output value based on any input value. So let's look for a pattern between our inputs and outputs. So to get from 1 to 16, we multiply by 16. And if this works for every input-output value, then we can use that as part of our equation. 2 times 16 does give us 32. 3 times 16 gives us 48, 4 times 16 gives us 64, and 5 times 16 gives us 80. So that means we can get any output value by doing 16 times any input value. This is our equation for this function. You can graph a function by using the input as the x-coordinate and the output as the y-coordinate. If the graph is a line, then the function is called a linear function. Example 3, graph y equals 2x. So to graph any equation, the first step that we want to do is make a table of values. So we can choose any values we want for our input, and we're going to use the function rule or the equation 2x to see what would become our output. So I'm going to pick the number 0 first and plug it into our equation where x is. So we're going to have 2 times 0, which equals 0. So our first ordered pair for the graph of y equals 2x is at 0, 0, which is the origin. Next, I'm going to plug in 1. 2 times 1 gives us an output value of 2. So our next ordered pair is 1, 2. Next, I'm going to plug in 2. 2 times 2 gives us 4, so our next ordered pair is 2, 4. Lastly, I'm going to use the input 3, plug it into our equation. 2 times 3 gives us an output of 6, so my last ordered pair is 3, 6. And I can tell that the graph creates a straight line, so this is a linear function. Then we can connect our equation, the graph of our equation, with a line. Example 4, graph y equals 3x plus 2. So again, we're going to make a table of values. Our left column will represent our inputs. Our right column will represent our outputs. And we'll use the middle column to put in our function rule. So the first value I'm going to use again for our input is 0. Plug it in. 3 times 0 is 0, plus 2 is 2. So our first ordered pair in our graph of y equals 3x plus 2 is 0, 2, which is going to be right on the y-axis. Next, I'm going to plug in 1. That gives us 3 times 1 plus 2. 3 times 1 is 3, plus 2 more is 5. So our next ordered pair is 1, 5. Next, I'm going to plug in 2. 
3 times 2 plus 2. 3 times 2 is 6, plus 2 more is 8. So that will give us an ordered pair of 2, 8. So now we can use a line to connect our equation, our graph. And I do see that it's a straight line, so this is a linear equation. Pause the video here to check for understanding and try graphing this one yourself. Example 5. Lisa made the graph shown, which shows the height of her flower after several years of growth. Make a function table for the input-output value, then write an equation that can be used to find the height, y, of the flower after x years. So, let's make a table. Our x values will represent our input and our y will represent our output. I can see here that our first ordered pair is 1, 42. So when we have an input of 1, we have an output of 42. Our next ordered pair or point on the graph is 2, 44. So that means when we have an input of 2, we have an output of 44. And lastly, we have 3, 46. So when we have an input of 3, we have an output of 46. So now we want to look for a pattern between our input and output values. So our first input is 1, and to get from our input of 1 to our output of 42, we could try adding 41. And if that works for all of our output values, then that would be our function rule. So let's see if 2 plus 41 gives us 44. It doesn't give us 44, it gives us 43. So that rule can't work. Next, we can try going from an input of 1 and multiplying it by 42 to get an output of 42. 2 times 42 gives us 84 and not 44. So that rule also doesn't work. So when we can't find a pattern between our input and output values, the next thing we want to do is look for a pattern between our output values. From 42 to 44, we add 2. And from 44 to 46, we add 2. So that means that this 2 is going to be multiplied with our input value of x. Now that we have the first part of our equation, 2x, we need to see what else we need to do to that equation to get our output values. So our first input value is 1. We want to get to an output value of 42. And so far, all we have for our function rule is 2x. So if we did 2x to our first input, that would give us 2. And if we did 2 times 2 to our next input value, that would give us 4. 2 times 3, that gives us 6. Then we have our output values of 44 and 46. So the next step, to get from 2 to 42, we would then have to add 40. That gives us 42. To get from 4 to 44, we'd have to add 40. To get from 6 to 46, we'd have to add 40. So our function rule would be 2x plus 40. And this would be the equation for the graph of this line y equals 2x plus 40. Example 6. The graph shows the total amount y that you spend if you buy x magazines. Make a function table for the input-output values and write an equation that can be used to find the total amount y if you buy x magazines. So let's make a table using our ordered pairs from the graph. So our first ordered pair in the graph is the ordered pair 1, 
20. So our first input is 1, and our first output is 20. Our next ordered pair is 2, it's right in the middle there, so 25. Our next ordered pair would be 3 and 30. And then our last ordered pair on the graph is 4, and in the middle of 30 and 40, so 35. Now let's look for patterns between our input and output values to come up with an equation. We could do 1 times 20 to get 20, or 1 plus 19 to get 20. So let's check if that works for our other input values. 2 times 20 gives us 40 and not 25. So that rule can't work. 2 plus 19 gives us 21 and not 25, so that also doesn't work. So next, we need to look for a pattern between our y values. The difference in our y values is plus 5 each time. So that means the first part of our function rule will be 5x. So let's plug in each input value. 5 times 1 gives us 5. 5 times 2 gives us 10. 5 times 3 gives us 15. And 5 times 4 gives us 20. So from there, we need to see what do we need to add to that to get to our output values. So for the first one, we have 5 and we want to get to 20. So we would have to add 15. The second one, we have 10, we want to get to 25, so we'd add 15. Again, 15 plus 15 gives us 30, 20 plus 15 gives us 35, so our function rule is 5x plus 15. So our equation is y equals 5x plus 15.